I have spoken endlessly about the damage caused by conventional footwear for years. And I'm pleased that the trend towards minimal shoes is building. Now, I've recently watched a video by Obi Vincent, bodybuilder, CrossFit, and social influencer extraordinaire, trying to address his gait mechanics and his pronated feet with the help from a Vivo Barefoot coach, Ben Levisconte. Now, Obi, while having an exaggerated pronation, still uses a more efficient striking pattern of running than reverting to heel striking. Now, he only heel strikes when he walks, so that still needs to be fixed. Now, they use novel technology, such as these smart insoles that showed the pressure distribution of his gait cycle, showing his issues such as duck walking. He was cued to practice straight foot tracking to provide better distribution of his load. The coach provided Obi with a structural analysis of his feet also, showing that one foot was larger than the other by about a half. You've got a size 47 left foot and a 46 right foot. As you would have guessed that the more pronated foot was the longer foot. Increased arch strength actually contributes to the shortening of your feet through the decrease in the length of the heel to the ball of the toe. Now, if you have a pronounced discrepancy in shoe sizes, I would recommend training the longer lower arch foot to align with the stronger shorter foot as a primary directive. This will provide your whole body with greater ease, reducing related ailments such as hip hike or a unilateral joint pain. After analyzing his form and speed in conventional shoes, he then asked Obi to wear a pair of minimal shoes. Now, when analyzing his standing foot pressure, we see that he is using his fifth metatarsal correctly, but lacks the medial support of his feet because he has zero toe pressure. This is common with conventional shoe wearers. Narrow toe boxes on shoes, toe spring. Yeah, you spend your whole life with your toes way. up in the air. Yeah, well, yeah. that's not good for anything. It's a legacy yeah. from old stiff leather shoes where you would have to have a little bit of toe spring in the shoe because mm. otherwise you'd scuff the front of the shoe as you tried to walk forward. The combination of toe spring and narrow toe boxes has asphyxiated any contribution by the toes. This pressure plate has 4,000 sensors in it. Your feet have got 200,000. Right. Is that your arch comes up slightly mm -hmm. when you absolutely pin your big toe down. Right. And this is necessary for stability and propulsion. Ben states that non-Caucasians are more apt to having lower arches. We're all kind of led to believe that flat feet are a pathological problem. Now, most non-Caucasians would have flatter feet, and I would argue even, you know, Caucasians who had spent more time barefoot mm. would have lower arches. And and that the low but strong and flexible arch is actually ideal, noting that many indigenous communities that walk barefoot have low arches, and that people with high arches, which can be as painful as having pronated feet, will benefit from running barefoot, or at least in minimal shoes also, to soften their stiffness. A, low, a lower arch is a more functional arch. So if you look at people who've never worn shoes, their arches would all be lower than people who wore shoes. I've spent the last 13 years trying to get a more mobile lower arch to give me additional shock absorption because yeah. the arch is a shock absorber. Ben says ideally the lower arch is a more functional arch, which I concur with. And many runners amongst them, Usain Bolt, have flat feet, providing more shock absorption and an extra point of propulsion. Ben shows Obi a few drills to wake up the function in his toes, such as toe splaying and toe raises to help him increase his big toe engagement. Ben understands that many try to cover more ground by extending forward, but he understands that stride length must be increased behind us and not in front. And this can only be developed with a strong first ray a strong windless mechanism and adequate mobility. We can see his gait significantly improved by the cueing of Ben and the change of footwear. It's marginal, but you're landing just slightly closer. You know, 
you haven't made any contact before that. So whereas a frame before that, the heel would have made contact with the shoe. Landing forefoot and using a higher cadence created a smoother stride. Practicing those squishing and splaying exercises, practicing the strength of the big toe, as in the raises all the way off, yeah. or just hanging on a step with your big toe. Mm -hmm. For walking, slightly quicker rhythm, 120 steps. For running, 180 steps. Now this video is an excellent demonstration on the key points necessary in transitioning from conventional shoes to barefoot. Understand that the transition time is unique to each individual. This has been Grown and Healthy, the show where we explore self-improvement through movement.